sometimes compliments can be uh, perceived as insincere. I think it's more of how do you feel? Like, where are you coming from inside of you? Where's the statement that I'm about to share with you that could be potentially, you know, perceived as difficult? Where's that coming from? This is Evolve CPG, a community of purpose-driven brain leaders who not only believe in better, but actively pursue it. That's better products, better brands, and better leadership for a better world. You can join our online community right now where we're going further, faster together at community.evolvecpg.com. Join us. I'm your host, Gage Mitchell, founder and creative director of Modern Species, a sustainable brand design agency helping better brands grow and scale their impact. Since the day we launched, we've been lucky enough to book some amazing guests on our show. Now, as we inch closer to 100 episodes, we thought we'd take a moment to replay some of our top hits from 2021 to remind you all to dig back in the archives from time to time, because there's a lot of wisdom just waiting for you to tune in. Our guests, Linwood Paul and Matt Demore, are co-founders of Subtle Distinctions, where they cultivate thoughtful leaders from the inside out. Thanks again for joining. Uh, the other day on social media, something popped up, and i just been burning... I've been to ask you a question about this because it kind of struck me. I saw, you know, a, a piece of leadership advice where somebody said, and I think this was actually coming from an employee, which was pretty cool, but an employee posted, like, I just had the best conversation the other day. My boss reached out to me and just checked in and said, so how are you doing? And I said, well, fine. And she said, no, no, you're not fine. I'm not fine. You're not fine. We're not fine. Let's have a real conversation here. And that just sparked a moment of just kind of opening up and being truthful and honest with each other. And I thought that was such a powerful moment because, you know, we always default to this, oh, I'm fine, I'm good, I'm whatever. And we, we just kind of push it off because we feel like we can't be honest or we shouldn't be honest with especially coworkers, you know, other people. And I feel like in, this, in these times, we need more candor, more honesty. But how do you navigate that candid honesty with also, you know, appropriateness for the workplace or sensitivity to other people's feelings. I think we're battling those two, two sides right now. So how, how do you two believe that people, leaders should approach candor? Well, thanks Gage. That's a, <laughs> that's a great question. And it comes up personally and professionally. So when it comes to, <clears throat> we want to be really clear about, about the, uh, what we're talking about. You, you used, you use a couple of words there: truthful, honest, um, and we 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 we're going to, for the sake of the conversation today, consider that to be what candor is: truthful and honest, and and a, and as well a foundation for high professional and personal integrity. So, candor, a foundation for high professional and personal integrity, is what we're here for uh, in this conversation. Because, you no, know, how often do people really share? what they're really thinking. And, and in the criminal justice the system, it's referred to as when you put your right hand up and your other hand on the Bible, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And the other thing, Gage, is, you know, we imagine that a lot of people are out there that are sugarcoating just about every message they deliver, especially the difficult ones, for sure, and maybe even more so with their, their bosses. Um, for the fear of upsetting the apple cart or hurting somebody's feelings or even deciding of how much of the truth they think that other person can handle. Um, and like you said, in the business world, um, there's, there's this unknown of really where those lines um, fall as it relates to what's um, appropriate or not. Um, so that's, it's, it's, it's an interesting line to navigate. But I think first to start out is to, to really understand um, a little bit more deeply uh, about the concept of candor. So, um, Linwood, do you want to speak into that a little more? Ab absolutely. And and you know, <clears throat> maybe the 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 secret sauce here in this conversation is that we're considering candor. We're bringing candor as as what we call high professional integrity. So when you start thinking about what's right to share and what's not right to share and who's gonna uh, who did, who it's gonna upset and the uh, that apple cart that. Uh, that Matt just referred to. Um, imagine being able to, in your business or in your professional life, leave no unspoken words. 
and, and no unfinished business in a conversation and that you were heard and at the same time didn't piss anybody off. That's the, that's the, that's the magic. So professional integrity uh, is actually the practice of maintaining appropriate ethical behavior. That's absolutely true. And we're suggesting that appropriate can be defined as radical candor. And there's a great model for this, uh, Kim Scott's model for radical candor. And it looks like, a, if you can imagine, a, <clears throat> an XY axis. And for those of you like um, myself who didn't pay attention in math, the X axis <laughs> is the one that goes from left to right. <laughs> I always mix Hor the two up to it. <laughs> horizontal, in other words. And the Y axis is up and down. Um, which is vertical. Okay, so on the x on the y axis, which is up and down, at the top of it we have caring personally. So if you can draw that in your mind, at the top is caring personally. You care deeply. You really are interested in what other people think and <clears throat> have to say, and um, and and that's the part where you wouldn't want to lose that. So you shade the truth, or you you don't tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And then at the bottom is, you know, not caring much at all. Um, and then on the other axis from uh, left to right uh, is on one side that we'll call it left is silence that you don't share very much at all. You don't share directly, you sugarcoat it, you know, all that sugarcoating that Matt, that Matt was mentioning. And then on the other side, let's call it right, we have challenge directly. People communicate directly what it is that they have to say. So if you look at those as an X, Y axis, um, <clears throat> radical candor would be in the upper right hand quadrant, the act of sharing directly and caring personally about another person. It's being direct, frank, and otherwise outspoken, kind, and it's helpful. It's a combination of both caring personally and sharing directly. So as a subtle distinction, we call it in our business, and when you walk away from this call, consider that as being the definition of how to have candid conversations with other people, that you care personally and you share directly. Now, just for the sake of what the other uh, uh, quadrants are, obnoxious aggression, that's when you, <clears throat> you challenge directly and you don't care much. I don't care. I'm just going to put it out there. That's obnoxious aggression. That does not work. And then on the other side, we have manipulative ins uh, insincerity. That's the lower left-hand quadrant where you're silent and you don't care. And then, and this is the part where most people have to really watch out for um, themselves is the, the upper left-hand quadrant in that of those four um, that is called ruinous empathy where you care a whole lot you care personally and you do not share interesting ruinous empathy so that's kind of the opposite of of that's where that's where those are the the, the various different moving pieces and parts to this i love how visual you were able to make that <laughs> yeah the, the visual is really really important and, and like linwood said um you know to, the, the how to so far is if you really care personally and you share directly, and we're going to talk about um, the must-haves in order to have those types of conversations, and um, you'll see that 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 deep caring and where you're coming from, and we'll say the term motive, um, for, you know, um, deeper into the call is incredibly important. But to continue to cement in what this act of, of candor is, we're going to talk a little bit about what it's not. So. Caring personally and challenging directly. So what is what is not caring personally, right? So caring personally does not mean getting all personal with somebody who wants privacy. That's an important note to, to remember. Caring personally also doesn't mean oversharing details of your life with those around you who may not want to hear them. So these are really important notes. That was actually going to be one of my questions is, is there such a thing as oversharing? So Yeah, what do they say? TMI. You know, makes people uncomfortable. No, we're not talking about that. You you mentioned not oversharing, right? But earlier you also said something about like not knowing whether or not somebody can handle that level of truth. So how does how does 
the average person how does the average leader know how much somebody else can handle and how do you know where that line is of oversharing i'll take a stab at that so um in some of the must-haves with candor gauge um it can't be used to manipulate or for aggression or anything like that you can't veil the fact that i just want to um, hurt you through the vein of well i'm just speaking my truth right so it can't be manipulative the point that i always go to is if you can check in with yourself and this is always take it through a stair step process if the very first thing you can check into yourself and say well why do i want to share this why is it important to me what's propelling me to want to be able to express this if the answer lies in the realm of because I care, I want the best for Gage, I want the best for me, I want the best for our company, that allows me to go to the next stage of the process, which is exactly how, how can I now share this with Gage in a way that he hopefully will receive this the best way possible. Um, and so I have a, a fun little saying, it's just what you think about me is none of my business. Meaning, if I can share with you something, Gage, out of total love and respect for the betterment of everybody, and that lands inside of you in a place that elicits a response of um, pushback or of or of any sort of um, uh, rejection or shame or guilt or fear. Then that potentially has you looking at, well, why is that eliciting that in you? Because I didn't present you with that. I presented you with love and grace, and and and, and but that's coming out of you. So that might be something in you, and you have to be careful with. Um, uh, those types of things, because a lot of people um, want to point the fingers, right? Um, so I think as it relates to the um, the level of sharing um, in a personal environment, if it's not oversharing, but think about exactly where that motive comes from. And I, that would say to me is the, the biggest checkpoint to figure out, am I oversharing or not? And where is it coming from? And let me take a stab at it too, Gage. From the other, from another point of view, as the receiver of the information, who are you to determine what it is I can handle? <clears throat> Remember when I think it was Tom Cruise who said, "I want the truth," and 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 Jack Nicholson's character said, "You can't handle the truth." I think there was a little bit of pissiness in there somewhere from the from the cruise character with what do you mean i can't handle the truth give me the truth and let me figure out whether i can handle it or not so there's a responsibility to honor the listener by sharing because as matt said it comes from your heart space it comes from a caring about you uh the truth our business our business result our customers there's what's at stake here is bigger than the idea that I can't handle the truth. And in business, let me just finish up by saying this in business, it's a real good thing to figure out how much truth your people can and cannot handle because on the way to delivering your promise, on the way to living, living into your values, there's going to be an ante that continues to rise in terms of your ability to handle whatever, including the truth, in order to get to what it is, where it is you want to get to and provide what it is that you've promised. Yeah, that's brilliant. That makes me think that leaders should have some sort of session, maybe with coaches like yourself, or you know, maybe they can find their own framework, but have a session with either new team members or semi-regularly with all team members to just really create a space of truth and, and push those boundaries to some degree so that encourages more truth telling and more honesty and, and reduces some of those fears of like, what if I say this, what's going to happen? Yeah, that's precisely, that's precisely what we do. That's precisely what we do in business is work with leaders in their teams to get to a place where they can speak on whatever needs to be spoken on because what they're there for is bigger than any one person there. Not only that, but isn't it great when they go, when they coincide? Everyone there, no unspoken words, no unfinished business, and we're loving the fact that we can be in an environment for our own good and for our customers' own good. Um, and get that done. I'm going to keep kind of uh, playing off of that too, Gabe. And that um, when you're talking about leaders and teams and creating those types of spaces for people to have those types of conversations, um, it's also important to, to keep in mind a few other things. And one is that when you share your truth, 
um, you have to know that um, it might not be acted on. And then now it comes back to you and to not get uh, basically offended that if you shared with somebody and that other person says, hey, Gage, thanks so much for that, um, that candid feedback. And that's it. And they choose not to act on that. So that's really important that you can't now take it personally and then blame them for not doing something that you suggested. Right. And you have to accept that this is your opinion. Um, and that ultimately it may not be accurate because now we're getting deeper down the rabbit hole of defining what is what is ultimately the truth, right? And um, if I have an opinion on your level of performance that, hey, you know, Gage, I, I've noticed this type of things in, in your work and because I want the best for you and I want the best for the, the team, here's, here's some feedback I have. Um, that's still my opinion and it could be inaccurate, right? Um, so it's, it's basically... Uh, an exercise for you not to take it personally um, and that I'm here to help you and for me not to take it personally if for some reason you chose not to act on that. I heard something I heard something really cool the other day, Gage. Um, <clears throat> they said either or is a sucker's choice. So it's not either my opinion or my perspective or your perspective going into it as those being the only things that are possible for us in this conversation with this candor, either your way or my way, sucker's choice. Because they went on to say, let's see, what they look, what we are all looking for, especially with candor, is the elusive and. And can I share directly and care personally? Because if we can hit that mark, then we can have conversations that we know we're going to get all the things that we need to know without hold, without withholding. The other thing too, talking about, I'm going to go back to this idea of setting up the container. I think it's important too that in that process, people trust the intention for their professional, um, you know, betterment and the success of the mission. So that um, there is this this notion, there's this container being set up um, that if I speak in that way, um, I'm, we're operating under the understanding it's, it's for our own, for our own good. Um, and so also on both ends to be grateful because how often do we get people in our world, whether it be personal relationships or family or friends, or in this case now in, in the business, where we actually get feedback from people that is delivered in a way that is caring, but might be potentially difficult for somebody to hear. And um, but those are the things that allow us to grow and, in our opinion, to actually get something done. And when when people are operating without the truth, it's really hard to make really good decisions. It's hard to understand where people are at because we're always making up stories in our heads. And how many stories do we make up in our head every day about every interaction? Because we're not speaking into what's there. We're not speaking into what the truth is, even if it's for the fact that like, I disagree with you and I'm hurt and um, I think this is a pile of shit. Okay, great. I'm not making you wrong for it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not mad at you. I'm just speaking my truth in a way that kind of puts that information out there. I was going to bring up a question that's um, kind of a lot in like interpersonal relations, right? It's like me statements versus I statements. So can you talk about like where speaking your truth comes in, in terms of making sure it's framed in a certain way that it's like, Hey, this is how I feel. Not necessarily. This is how the condition really is. Um, yeah, you brought up a super good point. Um, one was speaking in statements. Um, a good notion is if, I don't know if you've ever heard of the analogy, but if you could take a picture of it and you could speak into what you find in that picture stay as much of the facts as possible. And we talk about something called the blocks to active listening. And that really is understanding the filters and the framework in which we're receiving information and we're giving information. And it's tough to um, potentially see where as we're communicating, we're putting it through these filters, maybe the a projection filter or something like that. And we're, we're layering on our assumptions we're layering on our belief systems. We're layering on what we feel to be the truth. So to speak in as, as basic of a form as possible in the I statements, as you said, um, doesn't give the other person, I call it ammunition, to grab onto and be like, hey, wait a second. The, you, you put this in this sentence. You put this in this communication. What is that? Because that's ultimately 
where you find and get into arguments or pushbacks or disagreements is because it's coming through with, not in its purest, cleanest form. It's a dirty sentence. It's a dirty communication, if we want to put it in that way, right? There's stuff hanging on it all over. It's not just razor clear, free of any debris. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like I feel like you're not giving it your all lately versus saying, you know what, you're not showing up and you're not doing the things and you're not giving it your all. Like one of them is a statement that can't be refuted because you can't say how I feel, right? And I say I feel that way, but if I say literally like you're not giving your all, then that opens up a debate, which I think is kind of an important note. Hey, y'all. We're going to take and a quick great break to let you know about a new podcast called Climify for designers, educators, and sustainability geeks. Host and design educator Eric Benson interviews acclaimed climate scientists and sustainability experts to find out how designers can help combat the climate crisis in their college classrooms. The discussions on this program are geared to help you climify your syllabi to assign projects that not only teach design fundamentals, but also can have a positive impact on our climate. You can find Climify on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. If you want to join the conversation and become a climate designer, you can follow the show on Instagram at Climify Podcast or head over to our great teaching resources at climatedesigners.org slash edu. All right, now let's get back to our conversation. And a great thing to engage is what we call grounded. So adding something even before that. Hey, um, Linwood, uh, I noticed on Monday um, during this meeting that you were on your phone. Um, and I don't know what you were doing, but you could have been checking your text messages. and based on that it appears to me i imagine is a really good term i imagine that you're not giving it your all based on the fact that you were looking at your phone during the meeting so now i'm putting it to something that says hey the the, the word in radical honesty radical candor and compassionate communication by marshall rosenberg is i imagine and that, that's basically saying i don't know what to be fully true but based on the circumstances that i'm seeing that you grounded it in the meeting that you had and you were looking on your phone, you're not giving it your all. And then you could even put it back to them if you really want to start to cultivate that and say, Gage, is that something that you um, feel that is accurate? How do you feel about that, Gage? And now I give you the opportunity to speak and share with me your truth around that. Because now I just shared mine, you share yours, and that's where we say, great. Now we have our um, and what we call that is we're adding to the pool of information. Now we're getting all of our thoughts and feelings out into the middle of the table for us to figure out what we want to do with based on your performance. What I like about that is that you're being, you're practicing candor and then you're inviting them to practice candor back. Yeah. And we're not even, you know, on, on, in, the, in, in that example, Gage, we were talking about giving somebody your opinion and your observation. You know, last week I noticed that, blah, 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 blah. How about just giving me your needs and desires? Here's what I need. Here's what I'm, here's what I desire from you. Um, that's, that's, that's the thing that, that you could get the clearest on. That's the thing to work on. Um, not get, not necessarily getting clear about, you know, what you observed. Hey, doesn't matter what I observed. Here's what I need. Last week you were on your phone. I think the example was texting and so, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even go there. I would say, you know, from now on or from this from this from this point forward what i would appreciate or what i need is for when we're having a meeting that your phone is off and not just turned over <laughs> not just turned over face down on the desk but off and gone and out of the space oh okay and then the next step of course is to ask is to find out if you can have that can can that happen between the two of us can you can you do that because then you've got an agreement dare I use the word contract, then you've got a contract that's come out of that conversation. And that's what really gets the ball rolling on change. And one thing that, so just to put a category to what Lynn would just shared, he asked about putting out requests out there. And what many people do in a, in a conversation is they basically are really quick to put out a complaint, but they're not concise enough and they're not formulaic and they're potentially not aware enough to add a request to it basically says, great, that's fine, but without an action item, I'm here to be of service to so tell me what I can do to uh, correct this behavior that doesn't have you um, 
the, the, the happiest. So adding those things of grounding it, putting it in your words, I, then putting a request to it. Now I've bundled this whole thing so that it's comprehensive and that something positive can, you can do something with that, right? Now I know what I can be done. And then, like you said, at the very end, you create a contract. So that's a check and balance. And now we've got something that the next meeting you can say, hey, Linwood, based on our last time, I asked if you put your phone down and turned it off. I noticed you're still back on the phone. Now you're not, you already created the contract. You don't, there's no, there's no drama there. It's like, we've already talked about this, man. You know, now you've got another conversation. So. Yeah. It's not my observation. It's your broken mm -hmm. agreement. And that's a whole different mm -hmm. ball game. So, um, you know, we get asked all the time, Gage, um, what, what, why is this so important? You know, why, why, why do I have to take these kinds of chances, you know, with people, uh, in both in my professional and business life? And, and our, our, we want to put it pretty, pretty uh, directly by saying relationships of any kind, business ventures of any magnitude, um, cannot reach their fullest potential or have the impact that they can have, make the contribution that they can have. If, the, if, if values such as honesty, honor, dependability, trustworthiness are not in place. And all of those things um, fuel the, uh, the idea and fuel the work of having candor be part of your relationship. It's a matter of fullest potential. So... So, you know, so why doesn't it happen one more time? Because, you know, because candor and honest feedback, people, people, uh, candor believe, you know, candor and honest feedback can be destructive. And it, and it's really destructive when it's perceived or being used as a weapon. Back to what Matt was saying about check your intention. Where are you coming from? Why are you making this, um, uh, communication? And while it's better to direct someone, uh, directly and honestly, people need to believe in the good intentions of the person providing the feedback. So it's about how you position yourself in your relationship with people. And then a lot of times people fear, fear of offending someone and they fear losing their jobs and all that other stuff comes in. What we found in our work gauge is that when, 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 <clears throat> when organizations and relationships can be run from a place where you can trust that you're going to get what's really on people's minds, you know, what do they call that other shoe that everybody's always waiting for? You know, and you get called into the office, they say, Gage, you know, you've been doing a great job over the last six months and, you know, your numbers are up in this and that. And what's your brain doing? It's waiting for the other shoe to drop. Why are we really here? <laughs> you know, what do you, what do you really want to tell me now? Because that's what I want to know. So instead of coming from the, um, and maybe Matt, we've got a new thing, the Jack Nicholson place. Instead of coming from the Jack Nicholson place of you can't handle the truth, it's I'm going to provide you with the truth and we'll both see what you can handle and what I can handle. Because here's the part that, nobody's, that, that nobody really talks about a lot, Gage, is a lot of times people don't share the truth because they can't handle sharing the truth because it scares them to death. Yeah. what's true about their perspective and their opinion. So it's work on both sides. Yeah, that's brilliant. Like it, it is like they can't handle telling the truth. It's not that you can't handle hearing it. <laughs> that's right. I'm not even trusting what I'm thinking or feeling here right now. Uh Oh, gosh, how am I going to come across? You know, I know that I'm I, in the past. I've been a little passive aggressive. Is that going to pop up again? You know, oh. what do you think about that whole like compliment sandwich process <laughs> where it kind of hints at what you were just talking about, like you come in. <laughs> bring someone into an office and you say some nice things first and then and then you quickly layer in like the maybe more constructive feedback things and then you finish with a compliment trying to like protect their feelings is that all just kind of bullshit should we just skip skip past those compliments to soften it is that more for us to feel better about saying the constructive stuff or does that help no, it's not. No, it's not a matter of fake it till you make it. That's what I hear in that. No, it's not a matter of fake. We don't. We don't. You know. We don't. It's not. It's not um, brutal. That would. That's. That's a. That's. That would kind of be brutal. So Matt and I. Why don't we just Matt? Why don't we just model Matt what a conversation like that could look like? Because yes, Gage, there is some prep that goes in. There is some. Most people's nervous system and most conversations need to know where it's coming from. 
Yes. So when I said other shoe drop, I don't mean you want to run around with just one shoe on. Yeah, you bring the you bring the first you bring it and then you bring the rest as well. And I would say um, the distinction that I would make here, Gage, is it's not necessarily have to be. I think you use the term compliment because um, sometimes compliments can be uh, perceived as insincere. I think it's more of how do you feel? Like where are you coming from inside of you? Where's the statement that I'm about to share with you that could be potentially, you know, perceived as difficult? Where's that coming from inside of me? And that I feel is important to lay the foundation of as opposed to a compliment. Because when people share compliments, again, that the, the red flags go up as opposed to like, hey Gage man, we've been brothers for like 10 years. I really appreciate what you've done with me so far. I love you tons. And boom as opposed to like well gauge good design on you know it's like it's like it's a different feel right of like giving you some compliment just to like get to the next place so i think it's grounding in your feelings as opposed to a compliment so you want to do a little a little kind of role play yeah another another word for compliment gauge is smoke you know the smoke that proverbial gets blown in this and blown in that. Yeah, the smoke. We're not we're not talking about smoke. We're talking about people want to know who you are, who are you, and who am I to you. And that's not that's not a compliment. That's what their truth. That's what the truth is about your relationship. So yeah, that's the place to start. Did that distinction between compliment and 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 and, and relationship uh, uh, building. Um, work i mean do you do you know what we mean by that yeah absolutely it's kind of like reminding the other party that you know regardless of what you're about to say you still love them like it's still like a great relationship you still value them as a human as a coworker, as a whatever it, you know that's obviously different than like what matt was referencing like oh good job on that thing today by the way you're fired <laughs> you know like that doesn't make sense but it's more of a you know we you know you're a great team member you're always contributing well etc hey, but like this thing that you did yesterday wasn't ideal. Can we work on that? Like, I think that's a little bit different approach. Yeah, here's, here's how I'll sum that up, Gage. It's not just that I'll still love you. It's because I love you. Yeah, nice. So if I, if I had something to share with Matt that I thought might be a little um, um, important, I don't even want to say difficult, that it's important, right? I, so Matt... Um, <clears throat> I've known you now for, in, you've been my business partner now for a year. And what I've noticed about you is you love doing all the things that I don't like to do in our business. And it just really frees space up for me to just be me and do the things that I love to do. Um, I noticed in when I was by myself before I met you and before I had you as a business partner, that there were a lot of things that were lacking in what I was doing in my business and, 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 and taking care of. And, and now those things are shored up. Um, and so that said, here's the bridge gauge. I mean, here's the bridge that said, that said, I, I, I need something else from you. If you could, um, if you could hear that from me, how, how does that work for you, Matt? That works great. Thank you for asking. Um, <clears throat> When something in our business is um, a, let's call it fatal flaw of mine, something that I really um, should be doing, you know, I don't want to do it because I just told you about all that bit. There's some things that I absolutely should do, fatal flaws of mine in the business. I would really appreciate you letting me in on what those things are so that I can grow as a businessman and get done the things that are important that I heretofore have um, left undone. When, when that comes up from your perspective, would you be willing to let me in on that? And I will do my darndest to not be defensive about it when you bring it. Because that's my knee-jerk reaction to hearing things that I'm less likely and... Um, uh, know that I should have when I should on myself that I should have done in the past. Um, well, thank you for, for sharing that. And just to be clear, then what I want to make sure that I've got all the, all the details, right. And, um, I appreciate you, um, appreciating me for the, the, 
elements of the business that I do um, that uh, are things that you don't necessarily enjoy or like to do. And I'm happy to do that. So thank you for sharing that. And um, what I heard your request was, is that um, if there's a fatal flaw that I see, um, that uh, I bring that to you um, in a way that you will work on not being super defensive because that might be your your natural inclination is to take that in and, and become defensive about it and go to old ways of being or old habits or old patterns. Um, and so um, I would be happy to bring anything that I see that I deem to be a fatal flaw to not only our relationship, but to the business relationship um, and would love to hold you accountable to um, potentially not, not potentially, but, but doing your best not to take it uh, in a defensive way. Is that what your request was? Yes, sir. I said, and now, so G Gage, I, I've, I, now instead of being all afraid of upsetting the apple cart and, you know, all that other stuff we were talking about, I feel better because what was going on in me was I knew that I had fatal flaws. I know that I believe that he's thinking, damn, why can't this guy get our taxes <laughs> yeah. down to the dude on time or, you know, the things that are really important. And now, now even the accountability for for my fatal flaws is something that I look forward to having with my business partner. So imagine who we'll nice. be now. So that's why I do it. And the thing that Matt did fantastically that we want to make sure that people recognize is he did not interrupt me and he took notes and he played back for me what I said and asked me if that was accurate. Because all too often when you ask people, is that what is that what you said to me? They'll go, oh, no, hell no. That's what I meant. Blah, blah, blah. And then you have to get better at giving your communication. And that's what makes the relationship grow to what we were talking about before, which is its fullest potential. Nice. And um, I'm going to I'm going to go and kind of do something back to him. And by the way, this is this is not scripted. and This is all real. <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll, I'll share something. Um, These are real issues we're working out live this right is, now. This is the real deal, dude. Um, yeah, Matt, Matt and I did not script that uh, that request that I just made of him. That was yeah. the that was the real thing, folks. Yep. Well, I was witness. I'm going to hold you to it as well. Yeah, absolutely. This is perfect because so Lynn would ask me for a fatal flaw, um, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna take him up on his request, um, and this is this is uh, you know um, something about okay. So I'll take him up. Um, so Linwood, um, one of the things I absolutely love about you is your enthusiasm and your desire to get so passionate about, um, the work. And when you get into a groove and you get into a subject matter that hits home, it's like, I feel the Milky Way just drops right through you and just, you start going. Um, and I noticed that sometimes potentially in that, you might lose track of either time or you might not hear other people's questions interjecting and you either um, talk over someone accidentally or um, you, you, you um, speak at a duration that might be a little bit longer than people's attention span and might miss exactly where we need to go in the room or what, what kind of the conversation is happening. Um, and so because I'm super interested in your success, your success personally, professionally, in our success, and you're super important to um, you know the whole operation, um, I would love to suggest potentially paying a little bit more attention to um, how long you've been on a certain subject and if if it's potentially appropriate to move on sooner than later. Would you be willing to take that and look at that? I already have, man. Not only am I willing to, but I already have. Lose track of time, take over, talk over people, the duration of my share. Um, yeah, I, I can feel I can feel that even in this call, Matt. So I, I appreciate I appreciate you for bringing that uh, uh, up to me. Um, and 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 Gage, we're going to take it one more level um, for our for folks who want to learn from this. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to ask Matt for a potential um, correction, a way that I can know that that's what he's talking about, that I can know that that's what's going on right now. Okay. And <clears throat> so Matt, would you do me the honor and the play and, and create a pleasure for me? Um, and and I, let me start back from the beginning gauge because our work is that important, Matt. And because I want us to really get, get to make, to make the contribution that we intend to make in the world. 
I need you to help me do what you just said. And so I would, I, every time, you know, in, in the military, they say, uh, take one, hold, hold for one. You know, when there's an, an, an important conversation that's taking place and you need more input from the soldiers in the field or whatever, they say, hold for one and you just stand by. So when you want to interrupt me when I'm going on too long, even if it's now, just say, hold for one. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to let whatever it is that I have to, that, that I have to say go. I'm going to let the conversation flow in whatever direction you believe that it needs to. And I will pipe down without being defensive. Can you do that for me so that I can do that for you? I would absolutely uh, be willing to implement that system into our, our communication and uh, explore how that works for us. Fabulous. What? So Gage, now here's what's going on and here's what's alive in me right now, Gage. What a relief. I don't have to worry about my partner going, yeah, 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 ever again. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I can definitely see what you're saying that like once, once that's out there, like, because there was a lot of tension probably before you expressed this concern and this fear or this anxiety or whatever to your your partner, your teammate, your coworker, your whatever, and it was you were bubbling up inside, kind of feeling some of the guilt for your behavior, or um, maybe you're bubbling up inside worrying about how they're gonna um, react to whatever you're gonna say, or even like you've had a lot of anxiety about how they've reacted to what you've done in the past. But just getting that out there off your chest immediately like takes a big weight off of you. And then the fact that you're both able to approach this as reasonable adults who care about each other and want the best for each other and find some sort of compromise or solution that uh, helps you move forward positively, I could totally see how that turns what would have been like a weight or an anxiety into almost a light, like, like you mentioned <laughs> before, Linwin, like you're almost like excited now to get called out for certain things because now you know <laughs> yeah, it'll come yeah. in a way that there's like an agreement of like, we're going to be respectful about this and I get to work on myself while not feeling um, judged or something. Yes, absolutely. At the end of the at the end of the, 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 the road gauge, everybody wants to make the contribution that they want to make. Everybody wants to know what people are really thinking. Everybody wants to know what really happened. Um, I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was Oprah Winfrey. She, she said she's done like 36,000 interviews and they asked her, does, you know, what do you, what do you notice about, is there something you notice about everybody that you've interviewed besides their humanity? And she said, yep. She said, at the end of every interview I've ever done, Every person's asked me the same question. How'd I do? <laughs> so President Obama or Michael Jackson or whom, how'd I do? Everybody wants to know that. So candor is a way that people can know how they're doing and what's really going on. And that makes it extremely important. As, as you become more, I'll say in tune, with what's, in hap what's happening inside of yourself real time and are able to skillfully present something to another person, then all of a sudden you don't have to hold that inside of you because when you hold emotion, and I could get into a whole, we could have 10 calls on how emotional things manifest into physical ailments and how we literally hold those things and it begins to erode ourselves and show up as indigestion and all these things in our bodies. But if we're able to actually in real time understand what's happening, have the skills to formulate um, a, a conversation, then it's, it's like talk about gaining momentum, talk about accomplishing goals, talk about moving the needle with our personal life and our professional life. There's no bullshit anymore that we're, we're holding on to. It's like we've cut the fluff and we're constantly focusing on the prize, which is for us the impact that we want to have with individuals, for businesses, the impact that they want to have, the, the goals that they want to achieve, because it's like we're not getting bogged down by the stuff that we see constantly in organizations ultimately are the biggest eroders to them getting their, their job done is, is unfortunately in large part people and their stuff. <laughs> you know, so this is this is a really good tool that just constantly keeps the drama, we'll call it the fluff, the stuff that's going to keep you back out of the space of productivity and efficiency. Yeah, it's almost like going from carrying a hundred pound backpack mm -hmm. 
to, to running free with the backpack. <laughs> Everybody out there has heard those phrases, Gage, when Matt was just talking about how it impacts our bodies, how it makes us sick. Um, weight of the world on my shoulders, monkey on my back, butterflies in my stomach, pain in the various different body parts, neck, butt, etc. All that stuff comes out of a lack of knowing what's really what really needs to be said and what's really going on. So our subject today, candor, we're talking about that as high professional and personal integrity. It's, it's, it's tied into integrity. If you're going to be a good person, tell more of the truth. If you want to have great relationships, integrous relationships that are built on what's really going on, candor, truth, care, personally, share directly. That makes sense. Yeah, whenever I ask people for feedback, I just hate when I get the fluffy answers. So, like, you know, you're like, oh, how did that go? Or what did you think of this project? And I'm like, yeah, it was great. It was blah, blah, blah. But, like, that helped me grow as a person. So I'm always trying to model the candor and I think I go a little bit too far sometimes. <laughs> Somebody will ask me how they did and I'll be like, you know, it was like probably like a seven out of 10. And I mean that in a great way because a 10 out of 10 for me is almost an impossible standard, right? So an eight is like really good. A nine is like, you just blew my mind. A 10, like almost impossible. Um, so when I say a seven, it's like you're on the verge of something great, but other people hear that as like a C and they're like, what? I did that poorly, but that's the kind of feedback I want. I don't want to be told I was great just because you want to make me feel good. I want to like get real constructive feedback so I can't, can actually get better. Um, so that's, that's something I need to work on is uh, maybe, maybe how I deliver that candor, but, uh, I do appreciate when I get it in return. I know there's a couple of resources. Or, or authors or something that were mentioned during the call. And I just want to make sure we bring those back up as potential resources for people wanting to dive in more. So I heard the name names Kim Scott, uh, I believe also Marshall Rosenberg. I would also add maybe the Five Dysfunctions of a Team um, book by Patrick, I think it's Leon Chiani or something like that. I don't know how to pronounce the last name, but can you tell us a little bit more about Kim Scott and Marshall Rosenberg? Do they have books? Are there frameworks or something like that that people should know about? Okay, sure. Kim Scott is um, is uh, Radical Candor. Uh, Marshall Rosenberg is uh, Nonviolent Communication. Um, I don't remember the authors, but um, we, uh, we, we touched on um, Crucial Conversations. The uh, how to speak about thing anything when especially when stakes run high. I think that's the under t tone of that. And we were also we also touched on um, some work by a gentleman of the uh, uh, Brad Blanton, radical honesty. Those are the ones that I can remember. And all of those books uh, are very parallel, Gage, and are, are sharing a very similar theme. Um, I would say the candor and the radical honesty book are, are very, very close. Marshall Rosenberg's work is <clears throat> more about the presentation of how to deliver such messages. Um, but combining them all can create a really, really, really beautiful, um, conversation. Great. Yeah. I'm sure people will appreciate those, uh, resources to dive in deeper. So any other thoughts on candor to wrap up this lovely conversation? I would say for people, um, practice is a very good thing. And it's really interesting because everything is like a practice. Like if we're a baseball player, we go out and we try to hit the ball. If we're trying to become an amazing graphic artist, we practice drawing or whatever. So if you want to work on your communication practice, it sounds weird because there, there are areas in life where it just seems odd practicing in, and maybe communication might be one of them because it's so ingrained in our culture. So choose somebody who um, you feel is willing to support you and hopefully be on the journey with you. Um, I highly recommend starting with a loved one and saying, you know what, I'd love to take our relationship to the next level through communication. Would you be willing to like try that with me? And I'm going to work on some things. It might sound kind of weird for a while, um, but just know that ultimately over time when you practice, it becomes so ingrained and you have your own style and flow to it. So it doesn't sound like, you know, Linwood, because I care and love about you, therefore, uh, you know, it's like, it's not robotic, right? It's very much, it's fluid. Um, and so my recommendation would be find somebody, practice, stay true to it, 
And in the process, you're going to uncover more about yourself than you have ever realized because you get to see how you're communicating and where you're communicating from and things that you're bringing along from the past that you don't even know are still hanging on your communication. And when I say hanging on, those are the subtleties that come in attached to the words or the words that we use. Um, and it's, it's a really beautiful process because when you get clear on things, and I'm such a, and Linwood can attest to this, but I'm, I'm almost maniacal with clarity in terms of laying out um, requests, tasks for people to do email. Like I do my best to have it all super clear because with that's where when there's clarity, you can, you can get things done. You can have deep connections, you can have impact and, you know, you can make a lot of money. That's where to me, is at one of the deepest, richest places that permeates through all aspects of your life is communication and clarity. What did you say to me the other day, Matt? <clears throat> Without clarity, it's just imagination. It's just your imagination. <laughs> I love that. Without clarity, it's just your imagination. So my my summary here, um, uh, Gage, is to, is, is to pay attention to what you're not communicating or what's difficult for you to communicate because that's your stuff. And, and the last thing is be ready for an opening because if you do the things that we were talking about today, that we've been talking about today, things are going to change in those relationships. Things are going to change in your business. People love this stuff when they can get it. That's been our experience. Mm -hmm. They're yearning. That's a word we use a lot, right, Matt? Yearning. There isn't a single group or organization uh, Gage that we've done this work with that at the end of the, it all, they go, whoa, we want more of that. That was great because human beings yearn for the truth. Indeed. I feel like especially in uh, coworker, co you know, corporate environments where maybe the truth is scary. You know, you're not sure if you can speak up to the, the powers that be, or you're not sure if you can trust your coworker to like unload on them because they might turn around and tell someone else about it. But like, if we can practice more of this candor, both personally and professionally, then everybody can have like shared events going forward and work together more health in a healthy way with clarity and imagination. I'm going to use and. <laughs> there. For sure. And Gage, you just real quick, I just want to make sure you caught it. You use the term unload on them, right? So this isn't unloading still. This is, this is, this is, um, skillfully sharing from a place of caring directly <laughs> going back to, you know, right. So it's like that we're not, we're not, we're, we're still not unloading, but yes. And, um, and uh, like Linwood said, I want to triple down is that I think that we're operating in a world that is um, full of falsities on so many levels, morally, philosophically, um, monetarily, all of these things that um, when someone connects to something that's real, we can deal with the truth, especially kids, right? So kids have a notion of like, oh, I don't want to share this because little Johnny, it's going to hurt him. It's like, well, little Johnny is going to be more hurt by the by a lie than, than the truth because if ultimately you can deal with the truth, the truth is you got something you can hold on to. When something's fake, there's nothing to hold on to. And that's what trips people out because they don't have a grounding core. The truth might be brutal and hard. And, but you know what? At least there's, that's the truth. And I think, you know, so I'm, I'm done there. I could get on this all day. <laughs> Man, Matt, I remember give, the first give time. Give little Johnny the truth. I remember the first time a girlfriend, I asked a girlfriend, is omission a lie? <laughs> Do you, does, anybody, does anybody remember that one? If if I leave stuff out, is that a lie? <laughs> and the answer was what? Yes, omission is a lie. Yeah, that probably didn't go over well. <laughs> no. What are you no, leaving out, Lynn? <laughs> yeah, what you leaving? Well, that's right. That's right. Oh, nothing, dear. <laughs> yeah. Well, you really can't handle the truth, honey. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, that would go over really well. Yeah. Yeah, that's why so, I didn't tell you you can't it. I was doing it out of kindness for you. There you go. Like, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> well, perfect. We wrap up with model this behavior, but 
<laughs> but know where to where to go from here. So appreciate appreciate you both having this conversation with Candor and modeling some good behaviors and sharing some awesome resource, resources. I'm sure we could continue on this chat forever, but for now, we'll leave them wanting more. I look forward to our next conversation. Thanks, Gage. Thank you, Gage. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to learn more about Linwood, Matt, or their company, go to subtledistinctions.com. Subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel for more innovator interviews, expert advice, and leadership discussions. If you like this episode, leave a heart, thumbs up, or review, and share it with your colleagues. As an ever-evolving show, we also love feedback, so send us your thoughts or ideas for who we should talk to next to evolve at modernspecies.com.